So we have two aspects of our reality that have been basically uh, separated, ruptured in the modern paradigm in that love is considered something emotional. It is rendered as libido by Freud it's, and, and somatized and considered to be simply a chakra two phenomenon, whereas it's actually a chakra seven phenomenon that gets filtered down into the other uh, chakras, but its intention is to raise you back to the source of being and to open you out again to that infinite bliss. But because we can't handle that, we prefer to have momentary jouissance that will then have its backlash and maintain the homeostasis of a closed heart and a body that does not operate at its full potential and a mind that has only one tiny percent of its possible level of intelligence and power. So in the modern world, we have the, the aspect of emotionality, which it has been reduced to and, uh, and, and considered to be simply a product of the lower three chakras, uh, a desire for power, for sexual enjoyment, and for security. And its true nature as uh, the entire spectrum of consciousness, but particularly the source of infinite energy of God consciousness has been cut off and, uh, and directed into the field of psychoanalysis or you could say th psychological therapies in general and the, let's say, uh, the folk uh, uh, augmentation of the uh, intention of recovering that, but in a way that is temporary through the use of plant medicines and other shamanistic uh, techniques, as well as ritualistic ri religious uh, techniques of uh, possession and of uh, through through prayer, through uh, kirtan, through trance dancing, all of those ways in which energy can be stimulated, but stimulated from the ego upward rather than from simply receiving the downpour of the blissful energy in the most natural way that, that keeps the flow uh, constant regardless of what the body is doing. So it doesn't require any particular ritualistic activities. But that whole aspect has been cut off from the aspect of information. And information is what the world is made of, but information and energy are two sides of the same reality. So we need to understand that science focuses on the information and, and it believes that it's receiving information from its experience of the world and not realizing that that experience of the world is contained within the consciousness that is actually providing the flow of information that then it is getting reflected back through the sensory uh, modalities. But the information that it thinks is coming from outside is really simply being filtered back from its own transmission to itself. Once we can understand that, then we can see that science is always uh, looking at the objective information as something other and trying to manipulate that information through technology. And the emotionality is trying to get enough energy to want to live, to want to overcome the depressive uh, aspects of the ego because it is cut off from its own life force and is trying to regenerate some connectivity, but against its own internal resistance because it is afraid of too much power, too much energy, a jolt that will actually electrocute the ego itself if it's fully allowed to flow. So it is the, these, uh, these two uh, aspects of reality that have to be integrated into a single whole paradigm in which you will be able to experience super coherence 
and super bliss at the same time, okay? You don't want to have to choose between the two. And when you ha are allow the full energy to flow, that joy of understanding is also the joy of love because you can only understand when you recognize that everything that you're seeing is a manifestation of that same blissful energy. Even though it has undergone a torsion in which it has closed off to its own source. But it is always able to have its spin changed, just like you can have entangled particles in which their spin is linked to one another. And it's not caused by one particle changing and then the other change. They both change simultaneously. This is parallel causality. And they are changed because of a, a shift in the holo movement, a shift in the unfoldment of the implicate order. So in the same way, each of us represents and contains a, a particle of God consciousness that is also a wave and also opens out into the infinite field. It is not separate from any of that. But the way that the spin has been configured by the ego has caused a loss of connectivity to the source of the power that enables that particle to shine with the infinite radiance of a thousand suns, which is the way that it is uh, designed to uh, express its radiant sameness with God consciousness, its resonance with the luminosity of that energy that is producing the entire phenomenal illusion. Okay, that's the prologue to the film we're gonna see. It's a video lecture that will not go into any of this. <laughs> but what it will do is to give you a sense of where science is at in its most avant-garde uh, movement of a being who is, uh, let's say, doing his best to uh, integrate uh, what has been learned from meditation and the traditions of, of the East, including Zen and Advaita and Dzogchen and all of those with uh, quantum physics and phenomenology as a movement of the philosophical mind to attempt to understand reality by seeing it as it is without putting any grid of belief or of uh, intentionality upon it. So phenomenology, I would say, does represent the first step of the meditative act. It is a turning within of consciousness and a dropping <clears throat> of the imposition of uh, preconceived ideas. It's that movement uh, that in Zen is non-conceptualization, right? So to be able to see the world without conceptualizing it, without judging it, without attempting to characterize, categorize, imprison your, whatever you're seeing within a certain uh, pigeonholed frame of reference, uh, and especially other people, and to be able to see the divine majesty that shines within every being, regardless of the state of their ego. This uh, is what enables t the... Uh, energetic resonance of our entanglement to be actualized as the, mov the holo movement within the phenomenal plane uh, rising to its full non-dual capacity to realize that we are not just in samsara right now, but we're also in nirvana. And that we have nev never left nirvana. We are in the timeless presence of the blissful self and all of us are manifesting an aspect of that unified field. So the, what we're seeing uh, in a few minutes is a lecture by our old friend Michel Bitbol, the French uh, neo-Kantian physicist, phenomenologist, who I think is one of the leading thinkers who's trying to get out of the box of uh, dualistic thought uh, through at least, uh, let's say, the, 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 the means of a, um, 
a, a, a bimodal uh, monism uh, of a Spinozan variety and a, uh, a movement back into a pure experience or pure presence that uh, opens the portal to receive from the self what the ego does not expect is there. And it, it requires uh, an extra step that he won't make, which is to allow yourself to recognize that you are the creative poet who is producing the dramatic poetry of your own world, including all of its karmic vicissitudes as the uh, poetic expression of the uh, topology of your soul's uh, interface with its phenomenal shadow and the unification of the light and the shadow into a single whole uh, and the expression of that chiaroscuro as it goes through the filter of the weaning of its own consciousness of its suffering and the return to its blissful innocence is the process that is the ultimate science of consciousness that we are engaging in that turns all subjects, all objects into subjectivity and all subjectivity into uh, the uh, omnipotent God consciousness of super coherence and super uh, unification of love and of joy that transforms the apparently self-standing reality once again into an expression of our absolute being. Mm -hmm.